Okay, in this session, we're going to deal with the second part of the sequential circuits. Namely, we will discuss or we will see, we will cover the sequential circuit design. In the first part, we have seen the storage elements and how to do uh, sequential circuit analysis. But in this part, we will start from the scratch, namely with a textual description of the problem or something. Then we will go ahead and try to complete these steps. So uh, we will start with the specification formulation, then formulation, then state assignments, how to do it, and then flip-flop input and output equation determinations, and finally the verification of our system. So when we look at the design procedure, it starts with a specification, like uh, it's... Uh, uh, like it can be either a written description or a mathematical description or a hardware description language. It can be uh, if uh, the, these are the uh, if they are rigorous or uh, very detailed or uh, correct at the binary level, then all part uh, all or part of the formulation may be completed as well with respect to those kind of definitions or a tabular description or you have the equations or you have the diagram describing the operation, but we're not talking about just the structure here, a diagram like a state diagram. Okay, if we have something like this, then we can go ahead and, uh, let's say, I mean, uh, put the formulation part in this manner. But otherwise, uh, we, could st we have to start with the written description. Usually, these type of questions are given to you in the exam. That's the idea. So then uh, we're going to have the formulation to obtain a state diagram or state, state table to have this. Then we will uh, make the state assignments so, such that we will assign binary codes to those states. We will see one, uh, different types of codings, namely uh, counting order assignment, gray coding assignment, and one hand coding. And then flip-flop input out uh, input equation determinations. Uh, we need to uh, define those equations with respect to the flip-flop types we're using, the either D flip-flops or JK flip-flops or T flip-flops. And of course, we do the same for the output equation as well. Then we optimize our equations and finally we, will, we do the technology mapping. And in the end, we should verify the cor correctness of the final design either manually like in the laboratory or something, or uh, giving all the possible input combinations, or with a computer-aided design to whatever. All right. So the formulation, after we're, we're okay with the specification part, we can go ahead and uh, try to formulate the system. So what we're trying to do is trying to find the state diagram, okay? A state is an abstraction of the history of the past inputs applied to the circuit, including the power up reset or system reset as well. Okay, where, where does our system uh, start? So, if you, uh, I mean, uh, have a series of uh, uh, specific uh, input combination, then you will end up with a history uh, of this in future. That's the idea. So, uh, we use states to remember the meaningful properties of past input sequences that are essential to predicting future, future output values. The most basic one is the sequence recognizer that recognizes a pattern of input symbols occurring in sequence. Uh, then, uh, this, you can go ahead and move to state uh, table from the sequence recognizer, recognizer's state diagram. You usually start with uh, the initial state. It is typically the reset state. Then you start adding states one by one with respect to the uh, perfect combination that will give you the uh, one. So, uh, and then you go ahead. I will try to explain this to you uh, step by step uh, on the board. So I'm skipping this part for the moment. So, uh, but the thing is, when we assign the states, finally in the end, we need to have the minimum number of flip-flops here. Suppose that you have four states. It means that 
you need to have 2 to the power 2, 2 flip-flops for uh, representing that much of states. But, for example, if you have 5 states, it means that you need to go ahead and uh, uh, increase the number of flip-flops to 3. Uh, and in that way, 2 to the power 3, you can represent 8 different states in this manner. So, of course, 5, 6, and 7 states are representable with three flip-flops. That's the idea. Okay, this is the sequence recognizer uh, example that we will be dealing with, okay, including ORS. We're, we're trying to uh, find the uh, state uh, diagram for uh, particularly, uh, I mean, detecting this pattern, okay, and one, then another one, then a zero, then a one as input will blink your system or will help your system to give one output. Otherwise, it will give you zero. But you are trying to detect this, okay? Let me, let me move to the board so that I can uh, try to explain to you uh, fastly, as fast as I can. What we're trying to, uh, I mean, uh, okay, please. One zero. Oops. One one zero one. Right. This is what we're trying to detect. Unless specified otherwise, you should be careful about the overlapping patterns right here. Suppose that you have a sequence like this, zero or something like this. Look at this. This one like a window. This is the. Uh, these these are your series of inputs okay and look at this one this one also should give you one because there's an overlap right here unless otherwise stated you should always consider overlaps as well okay so in this sense your y output here or z output should give you one right here and one right here as well that's it otherwise it should give you zero or something like this. That's the idea, okay? So you should be careful about overlaps. That's what you need to be uh, careful about. But anyway, uh, if we moved back to our original question, what we're trying to uh, detect is 1101. One, one. All right, now go for the perfect sequence at first, okay? Start with state A, okay? First time I will be doing uh, nearly here, okay? Then if you get a one, you will move to state B, okay? And then if you give another, get another one, it will give you to state, uh, say, C. And if you get a zero, give you to it would put you to state D. Okay, that's it. And now, if you get another one, we will discuss. Now, be careful. If you get another one, where will this put you? Okay? If you get another one, it means that either you start over or this is the first one of the second sequence. You see? This one will put you in particularly B state. This is what we need to be careful about in, uh, I mean, overlaps. Okay, that's the idea. So it means that with another one, we will be uh, finding ourselves right here. Okay, what would be the outputs in this sense? It should be 0, 0, 0, but this time it is 1. Now, since our x is input, let's say, and z is your output, okay, uh, x is your, uh, let's say, and for each state, your input can have either of the values, right? For example, in a state, I know where it goes because I already did this for one, but what happens if I receive zero here? If I receive zero here, I will stay here, but still not blinking anything. That's it. So I just uh, put the 
missing ones as well. Okay, I first got the first one. Then I need another one to be right here. Uh, I, I mean, to go to C. But what if I get a one and then zero? Okay, so at, if I'm at B state and I get zero, what happens? Everything is lost. I mean, there's nothing in our pockets and we start over again. So that's it. And suppose that we read C, okay? We got our first one, then the second one we have here. Now we're expecting zero, but we couldn't. We get another one here. It means that we're staying right here and waiting that for that perfect zero at this point to put us to D, okay? It means that suppose that you're getting one here all the time, like, uh, okay, uh, you're here, A, okay, you're here then, uh, A, B, C, okay, then uh, you're at C now, okay, system restart, uh, system start and you're at A, you get your first one, then you're at B, you get your second one, then you're at C, and you're getting one, okay, I'm, I'm on C, okay, C, 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 that's it, okay? Uh, this is what I'm doing here on C until I get the zero here. So, okay. And uh, what else left? What else left here? D, what happens if I get zero here? You get a one and then another one and zero. And now you're expecting that per perfect one, right? but you didn't receive it. What if, what happens if you get another zero here? Now we lose everything, you see, that we lose everything, so we will end up right here. Let me just uh, erase this part. Okay, let me just erase this part. If I get another zero here at D, I will end up going, I will lose everything, right? At zero, I will go right here. This is for our Mealy model. All right, this is for our Mealy model. What if I design this as a Moore machine? I will do the same thing, right? One, one, zero, one, okay? It's pretty similar but about uh, uh, this one is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, rather interesting that uh, it puts, look at this. One of them puts you in another state, one of them puts you in another state. That's the idea that you should be careful with in Moore. For example, in your A state, you have zero output and you get your first one. Then you're at your B state with zero output you get another one. Now you're at C with zero output. And then you get a zero here and you will end up with D state with zero output. Now, if you receive the, finally the last one here, okay, you will end up with E state here, giving the output of one, this one, but if you see, receive another zero here, you will go to the start of the, uh, start of, right at the start of this, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, um, uh, this sequence. Uh, that's the idea because you will get one one zero here okay what else okay you get a zero here you're staying right here I will just fill the missing ones here for the moor okay these are your okay let me use the same color so so for zero you will stay right here okay you get your first one then uh, another zero here that will put you right here okay one zero will put you right here. It's pretty similar. And you get your one, one and then another one and then another one. What happens? It means that you're staying right here. At one 
And so when you're at E state, what happens if you get another one? It means that uh, you will have one, one, zero, one, and you're at right here. What, what happens if you get another one? It means that you will return to that particular uh, C state, right? Because you, you will have two ones here already. That's the idea. That's because we take uh, overlaps into consideration. But what happens if we get a zero right here at, uh, at the E state? What happens if we get a zero right here at the E state? It means that uh, we will just start from the beginning. That's the idea. And the zero, that zero will put you right here. I hope that I, I, and this would be your Moore machine state diagram here. And uh, I hope I did them correctly. Now let's check. And if there's a mistake, you can also, uh, I mean, do it on your own, practice on your own and try to have an uh, idea right here. Okay, this one is for your, okay, the, uh, um, this is for your Mealy machine. And uh, I think it's pretty similar, right? This one, this is for your Mealy machine. And this one is your, for your, Moore model, okay? I hope they are correct. At a first glimpse, I see that they are most probably correct, but please, please check these on your own as well. This one was our Moore machine, and this one was our Mealy machine right here, and I tried to show them to you uh, step by step.